memory is illusory, a chemical imprint on meat that must one day decay. Harvester is an interactive point-and-click adventure game released in 1996. You play as Steve, an amnesiac who wakes up in a strange middle American town called Harvest and has to figure out exactly who he is, why he's here and how he can get out. Now, you've probably never heard of this game before and you're going to be in for a very bizarre experience. It's by far the strangest game I've ever played in my life. It's funny, shocking and honestly with some of its content it's a real mystery that a game like this could be released in the 90s. It drew a huge amount of controversy, and one scene in particular where a group of children cannibalised their mother was censored in Germany and parts of Europe. It was a commercial flop, but since gained a cult following. And honestly, it's a true work of art. Everyone should see it, know about it, and play it. But anyway, let's get to it. It's day one and you wake up in your home. You can't remember anything and you have no idea who you are or where you are. All you know is that, apparently, you have a little brother who always watches TV. A lousy rat. And you better be quiet or you'll wake daddy up. A mum who's always baking cookies. Well, hello there. How about some cookies? There's plenty of rejects in the trash. Who are you? That's a fine way to talk to your mother. Listen, this may sound strange, but I've lost my memory. Do you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. A dad you never see because he's locked in his bedroom. Me and mom went at it last night pretty hard. He stayed in bed. I saw what she did to him. It was pretty bad. And a little baby sister. You're told that you're supposed to be marrying the Potsdam's daughter who lives next door, even though you have no memory of that either. So you go around the house and meet the parents. <laughs> what a card! Would I kid about something like that? Why won't you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. A greasy, creepy, fat guy obsessed with meat in your dad's meat factory. Meat. Rows and rows of scrumptious. Red. And a mummy looks strangely similar to your own, like they're the same actress with a different wig on or something. Honestly, you men can insult a woman without even knowing you've done it. What a horrible thing to say. You're both standing around baking cookies. Same kind of dress, same pearls. So bizarre. There's nothing bizarre about baking cookies. You walk upstairs to go see your bride to be, he's being kept there against her will. And in the bathroom, you find out that there's a secret hole in the wall looking into her room. Creepy. You speak to her and find out that she's in the same situation as you. She has amnesia and can't remember who she is or how she got there. I mean, I don't know anyone. I don't remember anything. How many times do I have to say it? Just one, Stephanie, because I can't remember a damn thing either. You talk to her about the Lodge, a shadowy organisation that runs and operates everything in the town. Everybody wants to join even though it's incredibly exclusive, and they all want you to join too. However, Stephanie thinks it's evil and wants you to stay away, but you're convinced that it's the only way to find out what's really going on. You tell her about the hole in the wall before leaving. You mean... a peephole? They're spying on me? I'm afraid so. So, that's the scraping I hear every night. The picture sliding along the wall. Oh, disgusting. And then confront your soon-to-be father-in-law. You've got a peephole in the upstairs bathroom. It looks in on Stephanie's room. Well, I'll be darned. How dare you! I'm no peeping Tom! I had no idea that was there! Then you won't mind if I tell Stephanie about it. Now, there's no need to scare Stephanie with this business. Over the next six days, you complete a variety of challenges given to you by the Lodge in order to gain entry. But keep in mind, everyone you come across is utterly insane and out of their mind. You find out that the teacher at Guy Memorial School brutally punishes the kids by hitting them over the head with a baseball bat and threatening to get out a chainsaw. If an A-bomb hits, what good is it going to do to duck and cover? Keep in mind how brutal this is for the 90s. A dead child, blood pouring out of his head. Well, anyway. The sheriff has been secretly blackmailing the post office employee, Boyle, because he burned down the newspaper building. He doesn't like any business that can potentially compete with the mail. The deputy is also another sex-obsessed, creepy old guy who keeps asking you to buy him a dirty magazine from the store. Eventually you give him one so you can get into the police evidence locker, and he goes off to distract himself. Oh, bad Jiminy. 
Oh, this here's the real thing. Oh, can I have it? By the time you come out of the evidence locker, the sheriff has already found him. Lemus, damn you! Wait, no, 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 you no! Uh, no! Uh, Standing up uh, the again. Keep in mind, this is the most normal part of the entire game. But anyway, let's continue. You give the evidence to Boyle, and in return, you get the lodge application form. That's the end of day one. For some reason, they show you a video of him getting undressed every single time. On day two, you go back to Gein Memorial and catch the teacher screwing the principal in the closet, and they give you the baseball bat to keep you quiet. The sergeant at arms at the lodge tells you that your first challenge is to scratch Mr. Johnson's favourite car, and he's in love with it. He'll try to murder you if he catches you doing it. There is in Harvest a man named Mr. Johnson. He owns a tucker. It is his pride and joy. I should like you to put a scratch in it. So you sneak into the sewers at night, go up into his garage and scratch it. You visit the cemetery on the way back and find Mr. Potsdam very suspiciously burying something in the dirt. What are you doing here at this hour, Mr. Potsdam? I'm burying our cat. She passed away and I'm burying her. Go away and mind your own business. Then, where's the cat? I, I left her at home. Now leave me alone! Somehow I don't think it's a cat. You tell the sergeant at arms that you scratched the car, and that's the end of day two. Now that you've scratched the tucker, you may proceed to your second task. You will steal a bolt of fabric from the fireman and bring it to me. You talk to your mum and find out that Mr. Johnson is livid about finding his car scratched. By the way, I spoke with Mr. Johnson and he's livid. Seems someone scratched up his priceless tucker. If he finds out who, there'll be heck to pay. You also find out that the waitress's kid at the diner has gone missing. Edna's daughter Karen has disappeared. Karen was playing outside as Edna closed the diner and that's the last anyone saw of her. Hmm. You go back down to the spot that Mr. Potsdam was supposedly burying his cat and find the little girl. Thank God I found you. Are you alright, Karen? I want to go home. Could you take me to my mommy's store? Or to the policeman? Can you tell me who did this to you? Mr. Potsdam told me he'd hurt my mommy if I told. Ah, oh, yeah. The implication later on is that he molested her and then tried to bury her alive. Hmm. Don't really know how she survived being buried underground, but yep. A game released in the 90s. You escort the girl back to her mum and get thanked. And as we know, our next task is to steal a piece of red cloth from the firemen at the firehouse. Now, the firemen are all gay and spend their time painting a half-naked man. It sounds ridiculous when you say it out loud, but before we can get to the firehouse, we first have to go see our dad and get him to sign the meat permission slip. We sneak in through the barred up window and find him... <laughs> oh my fucking god. My god, what has she done to you? When a man and a woman love each other very much, they go into a room alone and shut the door and bolt it with at least three locks and prop a chair under the doorknob so no one can get in or out. Then they take off their clothes and get out a wide variety of scalpels. Some curved, some short, all of them sharp and then the man climbs on the woman and then they with the barbed wire they I mean what can you say about this scene? Well, I guess first of all why do they have a cow? What's that for? Oh Jesus Christ how did the blood get on the ceiling? Oh that's horrible oh my god Okay, so we have the meat permission slip. We go down to the meat factory and three guesses as to what the meat is made out of. Somehow Steve just can't figure it out. O'Reilly gives us the meat now that we have the signed permission slip and we head down to the firehouse in the cloak of darkness. We calm the angry dog and check under the sheet. It's the male model. He tells us he won't snitch to the fireman and even gives us a hint as to where the red cloth is, hidden under the lamp. 
We grab the cloth, get out of there, and that's the end of day three. It's day four. You go to the general store and buy tape at a wrench. You talk to Stephanie and come clean that you've been performing initiation tasks to join the lodge. I visited the lodge, talked to the sergeant at arms there. He knows that there's something out of whack here. He told me if I wanted to find out what it is, I should join the lodge. I've decided to join the lodge, Stephanie. I think the answer to all our questions is inside. She tries to talk you out of it and tells you that it's way too sinister. You may be playing right into their hands. Did you think of that? Doesn't it seem like you're being herded toward the lodge? That's one of the things I hope to find out. I hope finding out doesn't get you killed. You go back to the sergeant at arms and give him the cloth from the firehouse. He gives you your next task, which is to break into Mr. Pastorelli's barber shop and steal his beloved barber's pole. Still, that is not your concern. Your next assignment is to break into the tonsorial establishment of Mr. Pastorelli and abscond with his prized barber's pole. You head down to the barber shop in the cloak of darkness, tape the door and smash it with the fire axe. You unscrew the barber's pole, bolt out of the door and that's the end of day four. It's day five. You wake up, talk to your mum and find out that Pastorelli electrocuted himself by touching the live wires left behind after he stole his barber's pole. The next morning, Pastorelli touched some live wires that the thief left lying around and was electrocuted. Well, that darn foreigner got what he deserved if you ask me. Jesus Christ, these pranks are starting to have a lot worse consequences. She also tells you that the big bake sale is coming up soon. You go see Stephanie and your relationship starts to blossom. I feel so close to you, Steve. Like we're the only two people in Harvest. The only two real people. Do you know what I mean? You both have sex because you have to have your priorities in order, right? That's disgusting. Remember when I said there was a hole in the wall? I bet you forgot about that from the start of the video, didn't you? Right, let's carry on. You go to the mortuary. Apparently a lot of homeless people travel through harvests and mysteriously die while they're there. The bake sale all the mums are preparing for is to raise money for the mortician so he can give them proper burials. However, we see a rather suspicious looking corpse in the casket, so we take a photo and deduce that the mortician hasn't just been burying the homeless, but killing them too. He gives us a tube of glue in exchange for the photo and our silence. We go to the lodge and the sergeant at arms tells us that our next task is to burn down a diner. Your final assignment is to set a fire in DNA's diner and let the French fry where they may. What the hell? Everything is really ramping up now. We're doing terrible things and we don't know what that's going to mean in the long term. It's night time. We stop off at the bake cell and all the mums look exactly the same. Mercy, what a terrible thing to say, isn't it, ladies? Yes, terrible. Lame. Suddenly, someone rushes in and tells us that the TV station is on fire. We run over and see the postman, Boyle, running off of the gas can that we gave him earlier. Jesus Christ. We go to the diner, break in, use the glue on the cake tin to cover the fire alarm, turn the gas on, light a match, and torch the bastard. And that's the end of day five. Jesus Christ, what is going to happen from here? Right, day six, the last day, the strangest day. You talk to your mum and she's angry about the TV station burning down and ruining her bake sale. She feels like she's got no purpose in life. Now, I preface this, this is when you're treated to, in my opinion, the most fucked up cutscene in the entire game. It isn't the worst, really, but it comes out of nowhere. Unlike the others, you just aren't expecting it. But I'll let you decide. What's wrong with her? My 
Oh, it's not as bad as it looks. You just pop them back in. See? What the fuck? There's no reason that happens at all. It has no bearing on the game or story. The baby's eyeballs pop out and she has to push them back in. Ah. Oh. Well anyway, it gives her a new purpose to raise her child, so I don't know. You leave the house and go check out the remnants of the TV station. One of the cowboy actors that works there said his face burnt off. Jesus Christ. The whole shebang just went up in flames, and I'm looking to mosey on to greener pastures, where the sun sets always golden, and there's always another savage to kill. You then go to the diner and walk in and, oh god, Edna has murdered her daughter and commits suicide over the loss of her diner. I've tried so hard to find an excuse to keep on fighting, but Karen and I can't go out alone any longer. This diner he left us was all we had. It was always a struggle to keep it running in such a small town. And now we've lost it. I know that I can't afford to support us now. There's only one way out. I'm sure you won't be able to understand the depth of despair that would enable a mother to put a rope around a baby's neck and push her into the air and jump after her. I wonder if I'll hear her next now. If she kicks around, it takes a long time to strangle me. I'll scream. But I won't cut her down. I've got to be stronger than I ever was before. But I hope she doesn't get it. God help us and forgive us, Edna Fitzpatrick. Right, let's stop and think for a minute. Remember when Doom came out and everyone went insane because they had over the top violence and satanic imagery and all of that? But what have we seen here? A game from 1996. A fucking child hanging from a noose alongside her mother who killed her. You can barely even show dead children in games these days. Fucking Skyrim had to take out the ability to kill children. And in Harvester you have a little girl twirling from a goddamn noose. Also, I suppose I should make a comment about the sheriff just eating in front of their corpses. But this is all building up to something, seriously, you'll never guess what it is, but keep in mind everything that's happened and it's all building up to something. You check up on Stephanie again, she's getting increasingly depressed and anxious. I saw the TV station go up from my window. It lighted up the whole town. It looked like hell. I wished it would consume the whole damn place and me with it. Don't talk like that. It makes sense because unlike us, she's been kept prisoner in her room the entire time. But then she asked to have sex with you again? Okay, do you know what? Nobody has plugged that hole in the wall so it's still there, but you know, why not go for it? After that you talk to her again and this time she asks you about Pastorelli's death and we own up to it. Oh my god! Steve, that was no little prank! A man died! It was an accident. I forgot about the live wires in the water. That doesn't change the fact that you killed him. This initiation killed him. It was just an accident. An accident which wouldn't have happened if not for the Lodge. Don't you see? I'm beginning to think that the Lodge poisons everything it touches. Harvest. Even you. She asked whether we burned down the diner and we lied. This had the stamp of another large initiation stunt. Maybe so, but I had nothing to do with it. Thank God for that. She hung herself, you know. And Karen. Can you imagine? Killing your own daughter? The despair she must have been feeling to do something like that? She must have felt there was no way to carry on after the fire. 
Accidents happen. It was no accident. The sheriff supposedly found evidence that the fire was set. Are you sure you didn't... Would I lie to you? No. I'm sure you wouldn't. It's just going to be too much for her. The violence, the death, everything is escalating now. She tells us it's because of the lodge, but we just don't listen. We leave and go back to the lodge. You tell the sergeant at arms that he set a fire in the diner and he tells us that this wasn't part of the initiation after all. We're not part of the lodge yet, we're just ready to be candidates. Ah, oh, fucking hell. This was only a trial to determine your worthiness for testing. Your initiation into the mysteries of the harvest will soon begin. In the meantime, be patient. Protocols must be observed before initiation may commence. How I recognize this sign? You will know when you receive the invitation. Bring it here and your initiation shall begin. We have to wait for an invitation. So we head back home, talk to mum, and she tells us something horrible has happened to Stephanie. Oh dear, I just heard what happened to Stephanie. What do you mean? What happened to her? You haven't heard? Well, young man, you march right over there this instant. She's your fiancé, after all. We quickly run around to Stephanie's house and see Mr. Potsdam going mental. He's outside the door, upset and talking nonsense. Guess I can forget about the meat, huh? What do you mean? Your dad must have pulled some strings. Be sure and check Stephanie's pillow, you lucky bum. What the hell are you talking about? You'll see once the sheriff gets here. <sighs> Stephanie, Stephanie. Things will never be the same now. We walk in and we're introduced to another huge what the fuck moment. Okay, you can come in now, son. My God. Is that what I think it is? Yep, it's a spinal cord. Is it Stephanie? I can see a resemblance, but I can't be sure. More pie, Sheriff? Pie? Don't you realize what's happened? Oh, indeed I do. I, I can just hear the tongues wagging at the PTA. W was it suicide? Never heard of anyone pulling their own spinal cord out before. Off the record, I'd have to say no. No, all in all, I'd say this was death by natural causes. Natural causes? You can't live without a spinal cord, son. Nothing unnatural about that. Think I will have some more pie. Right away. I can't believe this. This is horrible. Believe me, you get to the point to where this is routine. Now the only clue we got is that card on our pillow. Take a look at it. This is practically a confession. Confession to what, son? Murder. Isn't that what you're here to investigate? Son, you don't investigate natural deaths. No point. Then I'll get to the bottom of this myself. Yeah, I'm sure you will. More pie, Sheriff? Don't mind if I do. Ah, uh, don't worry too much though, because we're not certain that actually is Stephanie. We take the invitation to the Sergeant at Arms and, oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention that he communicates through telepathy. That's why his mouth doesn't move. You received the invitation. But you have not brought it. I don't understand. The invitation was not the card, but the spinal cord. It must be presented to me ere I allow you to enter. 
Oh god, we need the spinal cord. Stephanie's spinal cord is the invitation. We've gone too far now, way too far to turn back. We head down to the graveyard, climb up the crypt, and this is where the fighting portion of the game becomes necessary. I bet you didn't even know there was combat. We kill the dog, open the crypt, and steal the spinal cord. We take it back to the sergeant at arms, and he gives us the sacred dagger of the lodge. Ah, you have done well. Now, let the initiation commence. As your mystic arc, it is requested and required that I turn over this sacred dagger to you to aid you in your quest. What is this? We demand to know whether Stephanie is being held captive inside, but he tells us that we have to become a member to find out. Just tell me, is Stephanie dead or being held within? The membership director on the second level keeps track of such things. Oh great, then you are against me. I am the sergeant at arms. I am here to ensure that the protocols are observed. He opens the door and we're in. Now, let the initiation begin. And that's it for part one. It's just going to be way too long for one video. If you thought this game has been strange and crazy this far, then you're going to be in for a damn shock next video. Everything will be answered. We'll find out what happened to Stephanie, where we are, how we got here. Fucking strange things are going to happen. But thank you for staying with me this long. This was a tough video to edit. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm a new growing channel, so please like, subscribe, and honestly, leave a comment even if you didn't like it, because I love hearing your feedback too. You can click here for when part two goes up, or click here for my real human look at Alone in the Dark, the first survival horror game ever made. Thanks again guys and I'll see you later. <gasps> Lemus, damn you! Wait, no, 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 no! Uh.